Hey, what's going on guys? Got another video here for you and trying to pump these out a little bit more this week since I got a lot of knives in and this is another one of those. This is the Zero Tolerance 0801 Todd Rexford design. It's based off of his Singularity model licensed out to ZT and this is what they came up with. What I've heard and what's been said and what's been going on as far as everything with this knife is that Everybody seems to love it as far as the performance, the feel, the finish on it. There's just, I guess, some aesthetic or cosmetic things that they might change about it. And honestly, I have to agree with that. Uh, you probably have seen a lot of other videos out there already on this knife. And obviously, this is my take and overview thoughts about it, how it fits into what I'm looking for and, and uh, how it feels compared to everything else I have so far in my collection. And I got to say, this thing is really really good for the price um, and price wise uh, I think it's listed I think the retail price is 240 on these but most places I believe are selling them right around 200 uh, if you can find them the thing is they keep going in and out of stock really nice yeah but um, anywhere between like I want to say 185 and 240 is the price range on this knife and I think at a $200 price point you can't really go wrong with this thing it operates extremely well. The flipping action is great. The feel of it, solid. Uh, it has some weight to it, you know, for you guys that maybe are wearing really light shorts uh, or like maybe a very light knife. This thing does have weight to it for the size. And I know on some of the other videos that I did recently, the uh, um, RJ Martin Rex for uh, or RJ Martin Zero Tolerance 600, and then the Microtech DOC. I did a lot of comparisons to the production versus the custom versions of those. And this one, I'm not going to get too into it, uh, mainly because I'm not super familiar with Todd, Todd Rexford as I am, like let's say the Striders or the uh, Anthony Marfione stuff. As far as seeing those more often, and then also even with the RJ Martin, there's just been so much of the Q36 around that you can kind of get an idea of it without having one. As far as the looks and how a production version matches up with the looks of that. With this, compared to, you know, a custom Todd Rexford Singularity, which this is based off of, specs-wise, I think they actually kept this the same, which is different compared to the 600. You know, when ZT did the 600, they made that thing a monster. It's way bigger than the Q36. This thing, I believe, is right on par. Uh, and just to give you the specs on this, the uh, overall length is 8.2 inches. So if you're looking at it this way, 8.2 inches all the way. The blade is three and a half, which is kind of like your nice standard blade size, uh, you know, right in the middle there. Uh, three inch maybe getting a little short for some, and then four inch getting a little long for some. So everyone seems to enjoy uh, the three and a half. And I gotta say three and a half is a nice size blade. I like it a lot. Beyond that, uh, the blade thickness is one point, or .156 which 0.16 I'd say is kind of like the standard that you'll see. Um, just so you can see there, give you some macro shots on that. So, you know, a standard thickness, nothing crazy, uh, but good. And then the uh, weight on this is 5.85 ounces, so just under six ounces which six ounces doesn't sound like a lot, but for a knife that's a little this small, as far as compact size, 8.2 inches, it's maybe a little on the higher end for this size knife. Uh, the steel is LMAX, and we'll give you some good macro shots right across here just so you can get a look at everything. You have a really good stone wash finish, you know, production stone wash finish, but I think they do a great job with it. Uh, you can see the edge grinding on there, really good tip at the end pretty pointy. And then here's one of the points we'll talk about is the ZT on this knife. Now I feel the good thing they did with the 0600 is they only had I believe one ZT marking on that knife. But on this knife you have three ZT markings. See the milling here, zero tolerance there. You have standoffs on this, the three standoffs in the back there. Actually, I think it's focusing without the hand, maybe. Yeah, we'll go across this way. 
lock up pretty good on here. Uh, I'd say on this right at 40%. I don't know. Some people, because if they say it's all the way half across, they call it 50. But I feel when there's so much of the lock bar still not on there. I know it's a frame lock, not a liner lock. But I don't want to say 40%. It's a pretty nice radius on that, on the bottom of the blade there where the, where the stop is. You can see across. And then we'll get to the back side here. Same thing, you know, even stone wash on both sides. Rexford design, 0801 L Max steel. And then the serial number on this is 40, uh, 0407. There's the uh, pivot on the other side, the lock bar cut out. The ZT clip. And just so you can look down this knife. You know, really good, clean design. It's actually thinner than I thought it was going to be. And the problem is I opened up the uh, RJ Martin 0600 ZT before I did this one. And so I was used to the thickness and heft on that. And I opened this and I was like, whoa, this thing is not that thick. It's pretty slim. I mean, it's full titanium as far as the uh, scales go. And then the LMAX blade, uh, which meaning the full titanium, I guess, gives it, gives it that heft. But it's not as thick as you think it would be, and I'm fine with that. You know, it's very easy to get in the pocket. The one thing, this, this pocket clip works well. There's nothing wrong with this pocket clip as far as performance goes. And a cool thing about it, and maybe I'm talking about the pocket clip because it's very different from what the Rexford pocket clip looks like. But if you're holding it this way, there's no problem. You can squeeze down on this. There's nothing, you, there's no mark on my hand from the clip. It's fine, works fine. But the interesting thing is when you're going to flip it, and you're lining up. So I'm here, but if you look over this little cutout here, my finger actually goes right in that and locks in. So it doesn't feel like you're ever gonna, I know with some flippers, there's nothing to grab onto, or sometimes the clip gets in the way, or sometimes you're over on the lock bar too much, putting pressure here and it's harder to flip out. But there's no issue at all. Your hand fits right in here, at least mine does, and it's easy to flip. No problem. So that's kind of cool on that as far as how that is. And then the other thing is when you go to reverse grip it, feels good. But when you look at where it is, here, here, and this finger actually fits right in to that groove. So I think it's pretty cool. It feels really good. You know, it's locked in uh, over the top. This knuckle goes right across there, it kind of fits right in that triangle. So reverse grip on this feels good. Uh, regular forward grip, monkey fisting, or you know, doing. I think there's a name for this. I forget what the, the term is for when your thumbs up like this is fine. The only thing is there's no jimping on here. I don't know if there's jimping on the Rexford, the real one. Uh, but I guess I could, even if I could put it on the blade, maybe a little right here, because you you have them trying to do that bolster look on here, and so you could at this point from here up maybe put some of the even subtle jimping. I do like a little bit of texture right there. Um, I don't know if it's just a design thing. I understand a design and, and wanting something to look a certain way. And it does look good. It's very sleek, slim, uh, almost concealable, you know, how it, how it is with its looks. But I would like a little bit of jumping as far as my preference. The flipper is awesome. The flipping action, but even this flipper, I got it. And the flipper, the, the tang, whatever you want to call it, it looks so tiny on here. And I was worried because of other knives where I see a small flipper. I'm like, well, can you even get in there? Can you get enough tension or anything on it? But two good things about this. One, you have the jimping on it, which I like on the flipper tangs. And then two, you have it going at an angle. It's not just straight out. I like them if they're either going one way or going the other way. There's different rules of thought on that, uh, but either way it helps. But this thing is literally just draw it back. It pops right open. No problem. Makes a really good sound. Uh, I'd say on this, hmm, I'm trying to think what to compare that to. Uh, it's not loud, loud. It's just a nice um, quality sound, I'd say, when this opens up. It's not schnicked. It's not, I'd, I'd say it almost is, hmm. I don't know, it's almost like a blade sharpening sound as far as like if you were, you know, doing a kitchen knife stroking it this way, it's like whoosh, whoosh, 
just just nice you know uh, as far as the speed it's very fast out I'd say it's an accelerating flip uh, you don't feel like a long pendulum on this one uh, you don't feel a shotgun explosion you just have uh, it comes out, it breaks, and then it accelerates to the closing. It's just whoosh. It's really nice. So I'll bring that up to the camera so you guys can hear a little bit better. You know. Overall, really like it. Give you some size comparisons on this. Um, or before I get into the size comparisons, the one thing is it is smooth as far as it's opening. And then when you break past the detent and past the detent ball here, you can see no problem. But on mine, it gets tight right here. See, it's not dropping in. You know, it doesn't just fall in. Um, even on, yeah, you have to really uh, thrust on it that way to, or, or you know, pull, get some whip on it to get it to just fall in by itself. And I'm not sure what that is, if it's uh, too tight on the pivots, uh, or ha really how deep this goes into the handle. And you'll see on the handle here, so, you bring it down, no problem. And then right there, see I'm even hitting it? At this point, if I hit that, you see how far it falls, you know? But you can see, even if I hit it there, it stops. It doesn't just drop in. Well, there we go, it's dropped in. Give it a little bit of a hit. And maybe it's just breaking in too, but the other ones you could see, standing it just like this. Well, you can't see it because of the flippers in the way, but. You know, why isn't that falling all the way in? Is it just the blade's not heavy enough? Now you can feel there's a little bit of stick there. And then the other thing is you can see here, I mean, look at it, it hasn't grabbed it yet. And you can see you're like, oh my gosh, it's still sticking at that point. How deep is it gonna go in here? And you can see it goes extremely far. I mean, the detent grabs it, I'd say maybe about halfway down when it's in the handle. So you're at this point here, and then detent's gonna grab it, and you'll see it sucked down. Let's see if we can get it right here. See? And then it's way down in there. Yeah, kinda dark, but. So it's pretty deep in that, um, in the handle, as far as where the blade goes. So, that's just my take on that. Yeah, but yeah, the only thing with, um, Design differences. I mean, the specs pretty much match up with the Rexford as far as the size and everything. I'm not sure about the weight, but the the blade style is all the same. Really, just ZT decided to make this kind of design work on the handle, which I hadn't seen on any Rexfords. I've seen pictures of mainly. He does like a solid handle, either Damascus or a Timascus or a titanium that's smoothed or blasted or something. These three screws are the same. This lanyard hole is the same. Uh, the only difference is that on this side, the screws are not as prominent on a Rexford. He makes them very tiny. He also tries to, I guess, match them to the scale. And then his pocket clip is more organic. It's thicker. Uh, it doesn't even have, like, it's not a wrap around. This is almost a solid piece, and then it has a nice curved line to it. It goes around the outside of the lock bar, and, you know, very organic, very rounded and curved, uh, you know, a custom made clip where this is a production clip they threw on here. So what people have said is that they don't like the black on the silver. They'd like to have it all matching. And I believe when you saw the prototypes of this, this had a matching clip, either a stonewash or blasted clip that was gray or silver that matched the blade. And now they threw on this weird black clip. I guess ZT likes the black, but um, yeah, I could see that being something that people don't like as far as just the cosmetic look of it. Doing the same clip as Rexford's, I guess, would be pretty hard. They'd have to make a custom clip, so I understand they have to throw a production clip on here. But the other thing is the hardware, too. You know, I don't know why they threw the black on here. Uh, I would have liked a matching set, even if it was just a silver, just a, you know, a blasted silver here, just to all make it similar. The pivot and the screws in the right light maybe look gray more than black, like an off black. But when you do get it up close and everything, you can tell it's, it's black, you know. And then on this side... This clip does stand out a lot. But get back to the size comparisons for you and try to get this done pretty quick. There's your 0801. This is my uh, Makusta Sanme Yori VG10. Just so you can see that. Obviously, bigger knife here. 
Here's my Browse Blades Blacked Out Silent Soldier. Bring this down, bring this up. And right about there. So I get an idea as far as that goes. You can put this up here. And then probably the easiest one or what people want to see them next to all the time is the other knife that came out from ZT, which I talked about, the O600. And you can see how much longer this one is. Um, and then also, we'll switch them up, put this at the bottom. Because whenever you put this this way, it always looks like the bottom one's bigger anyway. So you can really see there how much larger this knife is than that one. So get these out of the way yeah just like flicking that out <laughs> so the other thing too is you can see the thickness on these the blade thickness right off the bat huge for the RJ Martin um, 0.19 and this is you know 0.156 but you know the the handles aren't that much different as far as thickness goes once again, you can see the cool clip they put on this one, and then they throw this on this one. But once again, huge price difference. Around a $200 knife, around a $400 knife. So you get a little better clip, I guess, when you get $400 for it. Um, I don't know if this is going to stand. Yeah, this doesn't stand. So this one's, this one's fine. It platforms pretty well. There we go. But yeah, maybe this is slightly thicker. Um, but mainly more because of what the backstage looks like. And then you can see they put the jimping on here, which I would have liked on here. So, get this out of the way. But that's my overall thoughts on this. Great knife, feels great in the pocket, easy to EDC, great action, price point I think is excellent on this. I don't really have any questions about affordability on this one. Just, hey, you know, 200 bucks gets you a terrific knife that uh, comes from a licensed design of an excellent maker in Todd Rexford. The only thing is just, you know, have the clip match the, uh, oops, sorry about that, bump in the camera. Have the clip match the knife, have the, uh, have the clip match the blade or do something a little bit different and maybe change out the hardware on it, which everyone else has said, so I feel the same way. But you can live with it the way it is now, there's no problem. And I think a lot of people would like the contrasting black, it just, most of us guys that have our feelings about knives, that's what we think about. So, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll get some other videos out to you guys. And uh, if you have any other questions on or comments, let me know. Thanks a lot.